Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be talking about a Dyson Sphere. But not just a Dyson Sphere, something that might actually be possible to create sometime in the future once humanity advances to a new stage in evolution. We've talked about Dyson Spheres and Dyson Swarms previously, but today we're going to discuss another model that might actually make more sense in our solar system. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So this particular model of Dyson Swarm is actually kind of imperfect and as a matter of fact I didn't really put an, a lot of effort in, into making this but you can definitely check out uh, the one I made previously in one of the previous videos where I've discussed more about Dyson Swarms and I've actually recreated them using Universe Sandbox. But we're not really going to be talking about this type of a Dyson Swarm. And if you, do, if you don't really know what Dyson Swarm is, it, it's essentially a kind of a futuristic concept of capturing solar energy by placing a tremendous amount of satellites that orbit around a star uh, and capture uh, energy individually and then send it to a specific location somewhere or possibly just store it for later use. Now, we're going to erase these objects because this is actually not what we're going to be creating right now. And as a matter of fact, I, I really wanted to focus on the idea of a Dyson Sphere. It's actually a very different concept, um, and it's a concept that's very, very complex as well. So what exactly is a Dyson Sphere? Well, it's essentially similar to a Dyson Swarm, but it is a sphere. So here is an example of what this might look like. I just have to place a lot of these around our sun, just so it actually makes a little bit more sense. Hopefully my game doesn't crash too badly. So this is kind of what a Dyson sphere would look like. Now, this would be a solid structure. It wouldn't just be objects flying around. This would be essentially like a surface around the sun. And you can probably already see the problems with this. Now, one of the problems is as soon as I, this is currently paused, as soon as I let go of the simulation, you'll see that it's not going to stay as a perfect sphere. As a matter of fact, for it to actually stay as a solid object, it would have to be extremely, extremely strong. It would have to be able to maintain this shape um, despite the gravitational attraction from the sun. So if I were to let go, you would see that it would almost right away kind of collapse and uh, no, no longer be spherical because here these objects actually orbit very differently uh, depending on the location they're in. So there you go, it's no longer a sphere. So creating Dyson Sphere is actually very challenging. Um, and making um, a Dyson ring would be more beneficial because then you just have a kind of a ring orbiting around the sun and then it would be much easier to maintain the shape as well. But there is a paper I've discovered very recently where they actually talk about something that seems a little bit more probable, a little bit easier to create, and actually a little bit easier to maintain because of the size of the structure. And it's something that will actually occur in our solar system as well at some point. And I'm talking about white dwarfs. Now, one day our sun will become a white dwarf, and it will still produce quite a lot of energy, maybe not as much energy as it is producing right now, but it will be uh, energetic and will last for trillions of years. But on top of that, it will be much, much smaller in size. So if I were to actually compare our sun to a typical white dwarf, like for example, I think there's one here somewhere. There, there's one right there. Um, you would see that it's actually m much, much, much bigger than a typical white dwarf. White dwarfs are really small. They're basically the size of a, a, a typical planet. And so to create uh, an actual sphere around them, you wouldn't need as much material because you, you would be able to create it at a much closer distance. So let's actually try that. Let's, let's go into a new simulation. And what we're going to do is we're going to change our sun into a white dwarf first. And to do this, we'll just have to basically advance its age by like, I don't know, 5 billion years. And there we go. I think this this probably did it. And here we are. It says Sun Nova Remnant. Now, it didn't really go supernova, but it did become a white dwarf. 
It's about 567 masses of Jupiter or about 54% of its original mass. And its radius is going to drop a little bit more to be just a little bit larger than Earth. Now, this white dwarf right now is essentially what our sun will be in about 5 to 6 billion years. And at this point, if we're still around, and hopefully we still are, um, we might be able to actually create um, a Dyson sphere around it. And we could use a planet like Mercury to create something that's going to be relatively thick and relatively stable. Now, this is what it might actually look like. So let's actually make one right now around this uh, sun white dwarf. So here is a typical Dyson sphere that we would be able to create around the future sun. It, it would be about this in, in terms of size. It's basically about um, 3.5 million kilometers in radius. And we could easily use a planet like Mercury, for example, which would uh, by then probably be swallowed by our sun anyway, to use its materials and basically capture some of the materials before it gets swallowed to create an initial Dyson uh, sphere that's going to be developed. And, and what we could do here is, since we know that Mercury and Venus are going to most likely get swallowed by our sun later on, we could somehow capture the materials from Mercury and from Venus and basically use those materials to construct this beautiful sphere. Now, um, a size or a mass of a moon, and I'm talking about our own moon here, would be enough to construct a Dyson sphere that would be about one meter thick. So a planet like Mercury and Venus would be able to create something that would be as thick as 20 meters or even more. So this would be a pretty thick shell. And the only problem is that we need to basically create something that's going to be very, very stable so it doesn't break apart. But because distances here are much lower, it would actually be, hopefully by then, realistic. And we would use some kind of a super strong material that will use, um, that will use very strong chemical bonds to essentially create this shell. Now, this shell on the surface will actually have gravity that's going to be very, very similar to the gravity on Earth. So anywhere between maybe nine to 12 meters per second square. So you could actually just stand and walk on this shell and really it would be just as comfortable as back on Earth. And the heat received here would be actually exactly the same as the heat received on Earth. So this is actually technically a perfectly terraformed Dyson sphere with only one real challenge and that's of course maintaining the structural integrity. Now in this paper they do actually talk about the uh, integrity and the structural strength needed to maintain the, the actual surface um, or the actual sphere and honestly right now it's currently kind of impossible to achieve but if we can actually destroy Mercury and destroy Venus and create the sphere hopefully by then we'll find a way to create these super dense materials that will maintain structural integrity. Because if we can't maintain the integrity, this is what's going to happen. Your whole sphere is going to turn into this very unusual, very interesting uh, object that is still going to produce enough energy, but is no longer going to be uh, terraformable or you basically won't be able to just walk on it. It's just going to turn into these individual objects that will orbit around the sun. And interestingly, there's actually quite a lot of different white dwarfs we can do this around. Uh, specifically, about one third of all of the white dwarfs we know of can actually be turned into these Dyson spheres. And the smallest white dwarf can be as small as about 0.34 masses of the sun. So that would be something like this. Here is the least massive um, white dwarf possible. So here the mass is only about 356 masses of Jupiter or about 34% of the sun. And this is the most massive. It's 1.03 masses of the sun, kind of similar to Sirius B, the nearest white dwarf to us. And here's actually the comparison of these two stars or these three stars right next to each other. So this is the sun, the most massive, and the least massive. So all in all, this is actually a very interesting proposition and a very interesting hypothesis, something that we definitely need to explore in more detail in the future because when the humanity advances to the point where we can actually hopefully 
modify planets and stars and of course the moons as well uh, we'll need to find a way to harness all of this energy effectively and this is definitely one of the most effective ways of doing it anyway that's all i wanted to show you in this video and hopefully now you know a little bit more about dyson spheres and how we could actually create one one day in the future thank you so much for watching subscribe if you still haven't and share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos i'll see you guys tomorrow come back to learn something else Space out, and as always, bye bye. And this is going to be a very interesting creation because of all of the interaction with other white dwarfs in the system.